The song was I Ran. The year was 1982. I'm Mike Score from A Flock of Seagulls, and these are the sounds of the time. Liverpool, England is famous as the Beatles' home city. And at the end of the 70s, it once again became a cultural epicenter. The whole punk thing was going on and the colored hair and all that. So I got into hairdressing. I met a lot of people in bands who at that time wanted to come and get their hair spiked and punked and colored. And, and that, that led me to going out to seeing bands, you know, local bands and hanging out with them. And then basically just going, yeah, I could do that. So I did that with my brother who had never played drums in his life. He just said, I'll be the drummer. Mike and Ali Score recruited fellow hairdresser Frank Maudsley on bass and Paul Reynolds on guitar to form a flock of seagulls. Mike Score became the band's reluctant frontman. And I didn't want to be a singer, it just because I was writing lyrics, everyone went, well, you wrote them, you sing them. But when I was singing, I couldn't do anything on the keyboard because, you know, I wasn't multitasking. So it would be like, when I do this, Paul, can you play something on guitar to continue the sound? And I think after about a year of doing that, the synth and the, um, the guitars literally became, you know, part of each other. We call it like a sonic sound. Some people say to us, it actually sounds like you're flying. You know, looking back at it now, we were five years ahead of what the punk scene was doing. Finally, it caught up with us and they called it New Wave. You know, whereas to us, it was just how we were. When the times did catch up with the band, it was more than just their sound that made an impression. We all bleached our hair, tinted our hair, spiked our hair. We wanted to be Ziggy Stardust. We wanted to be Starman. We wanted to be outer space. We were just about to go on stage. We were all looking in the mirror going, look how fabulous we are. And Frank just came up behind me and he was like, can you scoot down a little bit so I can see myself? And he just kind of flattened the top of my hair. The sides stood up a little bit and it looked great. You know, it looked like so. But at the same time, I didn't have time to refix it back into a spiky. So we just went on stage like that. A Flock of Seagull's first and biggest hit was also the result of some accidental influences. We went out one night and we went to a place called Eric's Club. And I think there was a band on called Fisher Z or Fisher Z. And they had a song called I Ran. And although we didn't particularly like the song, I think there was something about it that caught us. The band half-jokingly began toying with its own take on the concept when a stray image brought it all into focus. There was a record company in Liverpool that had an office about 100 yards from where we rehearsed. On the wall was a picture of two people running away from a flying saucer. And that was going to be an album cover for one of their bands. So I took the idea of that picture and wrote the lyrics to I Ran based on that picture. It's very sci-fi and the band was very sci-fi, so it all just locked together. The hastily produced video for the song was sent to MTV. And then they said, we're gonna play every hour on the hour. And that then blew us wide open in America. The song hit number nine on the Billboard Hot 100. A Flock of Seagulls split up in 1986, then reformed later in the decade. Through it all, I Ran has kept permeating pop culture, appearing in video games, movies, and more. I couldn't get away. The great thing with I Ran is it's got a life of its own. Every band needs to have a song like that that's gonna have longevity. Of course, when we play it live, it goes down a storm, so I love it. I love it and I hate it sometimes. Thank you.